Welcome back, everyone. Um, my name is Ming. Uh, I'm glad you're here to learn about integrating OpenStreetMap and Wikidata. Um, it's kind of like OpenStreetMap, but for every kind of data imaginable. So um, when a software developer, data consumer, dives into OSM data for the first time, their first reaction is, shall we say, colorful. Let's face it, the data we're producing is pretty uneven. It's a mess even. Um, but the most important thing at the end of the day is that we're collecting it. We can always clean up afterwards. Inconsistency is especially apparent when you're looking at uh, the values of free form but repeatable keys like operator and brand. So these are, these are keys where um, someone using an editor can type in just about anything. Um, but you'd expect certain values to show up, to bubble up for the top of a sort of list like this. So this is all the different ways people have managed to refer to the US Postal Service uh, in OSM for things like post boxes and, uh, and post offices. One effort to improve the consistency of OSM tagging is the name suggestion index. It's a, it's a catalog of presets, but unlike the, the traditional presets that you use in an editor, um, they're specific to a brand or a company or an agency. Uh, these are also integrated into an editor like ID. It's, um, this index is what uh, powers the brand logos. So when you say um, at a gas station and you search for the gas station's name. So how does this integration work? Um, where do the logos come from when you, when you do add those POIs? Um, so each preset in NSI comes with a set of tags, including a machine readable version of uh, those freeform tags like operator and brand. Um, and each of those machine readable tags is formatted as a Wikidata QID. So that's a unique numeric ID prefixed by the letter Q. So here's Wikidata. The, it's the breadth and fame of Wikipedia meets the structured but still messy machine readability uh, of, of uh, OpenStreetMap. So Wikidata is eight years old, um, actually last week, I think, uh, and already the biggest database of people, places, things, and concepts around. It has a lot of its own data gaps and inconsistencies, just like OpenStreetMap, but it has a lot of the things you want to them. So for example, here's a Wikidata item for one of the brands I showed you on another slide. It's tagged with a lot of things you won't ever see tagged on a bank branch in OSM. Uh, it's got transliterations of the bank's name into other scripts like Chinese. It's got the headquarters location, the founder's name, um, the social media account names uh, of the whole brand, uh, and new technical information like Swift codes. So what's the point of making sure that OSM has these tags with Wikidata QIDs other than those pretty logos in the editor? Um, one real one big reason for it is that it lets um, people analyze OSM data using federated queries. Uh, it's a fancy term for uh, doing crosswalks between different databases. Yuri Astrakhan set up a tool called Sofox that queries both OSM and Wikidata at the same time. I'm not going to dissect this, uh, this code for you right here in this presentation. You'll have to uh, stay around tomorrow for that. Um, but uh, I'll just tell you that it uses a standard query language called Sparkle that kind of sort of looks like SQL. And that code that you just saw uh, plots brands by the number of Twitter subscribers along the x-axis and the number of store locations mapped in OSM along the y-axis. You can kind of see Starbucks standing out on Twitter. Uh, sorry, uh, Starbucks standing out uh, on, on the, like the Twitter subscribers and uh, McDonald's standing out on OSM towards the top. And this query took just a few seconds. Oops. Place. Um, so here's um, uh, the logos of, you know, there's another way of visualizing the data. Here's logos of the most popular brands in OSM. Um, but there's a lot more to fair queries than, than brands. So here's my favorite. Um, the, this is uh, a, a chart um, along with uh, color coded by what they represent. And um, I like it because it kind of shows the point of uh, micromapping. I mean, you're micromapping usually with expectation that it won't ever be used, really used for anything much other than maybe a renderer. But here it shows that you can actually share these one-off queries. And uh, here's a piece of pop art. It's a bubble chart of the most common um, colors used for uh, public transportation routes in OSM. You can kind of see how um, the basic colors are, are more common, but brand mappers have kind of branched out and uh, maps much more specific shades. 
Um, so it isn't all just for visual, uh, visual appeal. Um, so this is an example of, uh, this is a map of um, uh, thing, uh, streets and, and other monuments named after uh, Confederates, segregationists, slaveholders, et cetera. And um, kind of shows how maybe you can uh, use some of these queries in the real world for, for uh, current events and other, um, other things of, of interest. Here's a very different map of um, uh, the county, the most imported have not been so weighing to normal population. So the, um, the county names as well, but the population come from, from Wikidata. Um, so that's all I have time I have uh, for uh, today, but um, here's some links to um, to other things, to both the examples that uh, I showed and uh, where you can keep on going and, and play with this yourself. We're having a wiki office hours tomorrow. Um, so, uh, tomorrow is uh, 2.30 to 4 Eastern time and 11.30 to 1 Pacific time. Uh, and I encourage you to check out um, these three channels in Slack as well, if you're interested. Thank you.